In this lesson, you will learn how to model the entities in your application as nodes. The first step in the modeling process is to define the names of labels that will be used in the graph. You define labels to represent the dominant entities in your use cases. The use case, what ingredients are used in a recipe, would lead to a model where nodes have the ingredient and recipe labels. Ingredient nodes will eventually be related to recipe nodes. The use case, who is married to this person, would lead to a model that contains person nodes. Person nodes will eventually be related to other person nodes. In our movie domain use cases, we use the nouns in the use cases to help us define the names for the labels in our graph. With these use cases, what people acted in a movie, what person directed a movie, what movies did a person act in, we can see that the labels that will help us implement our use cases are person and movie. A label defines how nodes will be grouped in the graph, but you need to define properties for nodes of a given label to support identifying a node. A best practice is to always have a unique identifying property for a node with a given label. You also use properties to help answer details of the use cases by testing property values. And you can use properties to return specific data from a query. In this query, we use the name property to anchor the query and tell the query processor how to find the starting point for the traversal. In this query, we are anchoring on the movie node since we have a specific node we want to include in the traversal. And in this query, we not only use the name property to find the node with the name property value of Tom Hanks, but we return title and release properties for the movie nodes that match the pattern. In our movie graph with person and movie nodes, we will use the TMDB ID property to uniquely identify a person node and a movie node. Now, let's take a look at the use cases of our movie application that will utilize movie and person nodes. In order to analyze each use case, it is helpful that you work with Cypher developers who understand how Cypher queries work. Their knowledge will help to inform the steps that need to be taken to implement each use case. The first use case is what people acted in a movie. Movie in this use case is the anchor for the query. The steps will be to retrieve the movie by its title, then traverse the graph to find the actors for the movie and return their names. Here we see that we must define a movie title property and a person name property. In this next use case, again, we retrieve the movie by its title, but we traverse the graph to find the director and return the name. There are no new properties that we need to define here. In this next use case, our anchor is the name of the person, but again, we need no other properties on our graph to implement this query. In this next use case, we are anchoring on the title of the movie. In order to satisfy the query, we need information about the age or birth date of the actor. So in this use case, we see that we need a born property for a person. In this next use case, we need to anchor the query by the year that the movie was released. Then we need to compare IMDb ratings. In this use case, we need to add a released and an IMDb rating property to a movie node. And in this last use case, we use the name of the anchor, but we need to test a movie to see if it is in a particular genre. A movie can be identified with multiple genres, for example, drama and romance. To answer this question, we need to retrieve the movie, then evaluate the values of the genre for a movie. We need to add a genre property. Now, let's look at what the data model will be based upon using our use cases thus far. It is important to agree upon the names that will be used for the properties, as well as the type of data for the property. Some properties are optional. For example, died will only be set for actors or directors who have died. The movie genres property is a list of values for a particular movie. Here is the instance model you will be creating in the next challenge. Your first instance model will contain four person nodes and three movie nodes. 
After that, you will be challenged to define a new label for the graph based upon other use cases of the application. And then you will implement the code to create these new nodes in the graph. This concludes our look at how to model the entities in your application as nodes.